Next on Startup, we head to Cedar Rapids, Iowa to talk to Steve and Andrea, a husband and wife team who created Ecolips, a B corporation that creates organic lip balm. Then we head over to Birmingham, Alabama to talk to Selena who started Sarcor, a civil engineering firm that's helping to redesign local Alabama communities. All of this and more is next on Startup. It all starts with an idea and everyone has them. In the world of business where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support Startup and those who dare to share their ideas with the world. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. I'm on 10th Avenue in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I'm gonna go talk to Steve and Andrea, the creators of Ecolips. After years of operating at a loss, the tenacity of this husband and wife team finally paid off. Let's go hear their story. Dr. Charles Fleet first invented lip balm in the 1800s. Before lip balm, people typically used earwax to treat chapped lips. These days, lip balm has many convenient uses, ranging anywhere from stopping bleeding from a shaving cut to lubricating a zipper. Steve and Andrea knew they had something special from the first tubes that Andrea made by hand, but they never imagined all of the interesting twists and turns that would eventually lead them to operating a successful company. All right, so start by telling us who you are and where we are today. I'm Steve Shriver. I am the president and founder of Ecolips. And uh, you're, you're standing in the world headquarters of Ecolips. We're in the, the historic Cherry Building in New Bohemia, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Tell me about your, your education history and work, a little bit about work experience. Okay. Um, I was always an entrepreneur. When I was a kid, I was just selling things mainly. Uh, you know, at school playground, I'd be selling packs of gum and just always trying to make, 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 a, make a dime. Steve said that in the beginning, this whole thing was inspired by you, your idea. You were the one making lip balm. Yes. My mom, knowing that I liked flowers and plants, suggested that I go to what's called Herb Fest at Frontier Natural Products. It's a big festival where they talk about herbs. I went and I learned how to make herbal lip balm. And every few months after that, I would make a new batch of lip balm and tweak my recipe here and yeah. there. And shortly after, I met Steve. Uh, I had a rock climbing guiding service for a while while I was in the outdoor industry. But that is where uh, I met my wife, who was a frequent shopper in the store and uh, had my eye on her and she was carrying around. <laughs> she was shopping and you were shopping. Right, exactly. <laughs> I gave him a jar of my lip balm. Mm -hmm. He opened it, put it on looked me in the eye and said, I can sell this. <laughs> and I said, okay. It, it really just, you know, it just sort of happened really fast. I don't know that she knew what she was getting into, but yeah. um, we, we converted that $5,000 into a product that, that we could go, you know, we ultimately went door to door. It was the hemp industry that really just let us Ignited take it. the next step. Cool. So that first year, just smiled and dialed, called all these hemp stores. Mm -hmm. They ordered because they needed product, and that's how we got cash flow moving. 
Now we sold, we sold that business that we had then. It was uh, another business that became a specific private label manufacturer. And so in okay. 2003, we sold off this larger manufacturing business to, uh, to start Ecolips, which was the first organic lip balm on the market. Uh, you don't have to disclose the exact amount if you don't want, but were you able to sell it for quite a bit? Yeah, I mean, at 30 years old, seven figures. Um, seven. In six years after we started it with $5,000. So it was- So you became a millionaire. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes. That's, that's incredible, yes. man. You're hanging out with a big guy right now. <laughs> Holy cow. Lip balm doesn't actually moisturize your lips. It just seals in the moisture that's already there. I want to hear from 2003 after, okay. the, after the buyout to Ecolips. What were the steps and stages over that process? Uh, we started full time, you know, 80 hours a week on Ecolips. And it was, you know, coming up with products and pitching stores uh, on, in the lip balm category. And at the time, there was no there was no organic lip balm on the market. Mm -hmm. We saw a big rise in the in the potential of organic and sure. the demand for organic, and um, we you know we just hit the streets. We ultimately, went door to door selling lip balm. How long before you became profitable? How much yeah. how much money did it take to get it off the ground? Was this the facility you moved into? Yeah, we started in this building. Okay, and we uh, and and we were not profitable for the first five years. Five years. Five years. I ended up in the hospital three years into it for stress-related oh, illness, no. and I've been a healthy person my whole life, but there was a point where we were losing $30,000 a month, and that could only last so long, and it was, you know, there were times where we, most people would have closed the doors. Owning a business, you know, it's ups and downs, ups right. and downs, so it's just one day at a time. Was there ever a point that you got scared, like, this might not work, we're going to have to stop? No. Never? No. Never thought about that. And with 30000 a month, that million turns into oh, yeah. five bucks pretty right. quick. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I was the, yeah, the wealthiest broke guy I knew. How, yeah. how did you lose 30000 a month so people can understand and maybe yeah. learn from you your know, mistake? We, we scaled up. We had, we had a couple big retailers sign on. Yeah. Uh, and we, we scaled up. We scaled up our inventory, our manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We added a few positions. And, um, the market was not ready for our for our product yet. Okay. So the the retailers that we got into, a lot of them returned the product. It the demand selling. wasn't there. It wasn't yeah. selling. Yeah. It was still just a little too soon for organic lip balm. With, with constant losses like that, how do you keep faith? Um, I think it's a support team. You know, we've got both have great parents, great kids, um, yeah. uh, great friends, great community. If it fails, we're in it together. If it succeeds, it's we're in it together. Five years into it, uh, we finally, fi well, we, we had no other option but to make money. And so, this is where we make about 20 to 40,000 sticks of lip balm a day. 20 so, to 40,000? That's right, that's right. Whoa, per day. Um, Sweet. So what we do is we fill the trays, we have empty, empty con lip balm containers on the bottom. Okay. And we're gonna take that container and just volumetric, and just pour it right over the top. Look at Pure Pro. That's how you pro. do it? That's exactly how you do it. Then we're gonna scrape, scrape this tray. Uh, is this wax used for anything else after? Well, then we remelt it. So we, we try uh, to okay. be as zero waste as possible. You're just gonna, there it is. Okay, so the next stage of the process, uh, what is this called, what we're gonna do? So this is, uh, we're gonna, we're pucking right now. So we're gonna take the lip balm out of the trays and put them each one into a puck. So it can get a little bit hectic. Oh my God! You just missed yeah. one there. Dang it! It's slowing down production. <laughs> right. Screwed up the whole operation now. Right. And now that one, uh, we need to. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Grab that one. You gotta push it down. Yeah. Nice. It's gonna go in wrong. There we go. He got All right, it. We'll get it. We'll He's get gonna it. save us. <laughs> the lip care sector has been forecast to hit a market value of 1.9 billion dollars by 2017. In 2009, I would assume that was the year that you turned a profit. What was the turning point? Was it one big order from a retailer that started selling, right. or what was the thing that made you, you know, out of, get you out of the weeds? Right, right. Well, it, I mean, it was really economies of scale. It was, we've grown sales every year, and it was just getting to the point where we just, to cover our overhead, we just barely hit it. And I'm talking, I mean, our profit that year was $3,000. 
People care about where stuff comes from. Yes. I think more now today than even a year ago, two yep. years ago. We just launched a product that has manganga oil. We were the first to import this in the United States. Mm. It's, a, it's an oil that comes from the uh, Kung Bush tribe in, uh, in Zambia. Okay. And, uh, and it, uh, it's high in essential fatty acids. Um, and, and really good for your lips and skin. Yeah. But, uh, but we, can, we can tell the story, we can show pictures of the farmers growing it, yeah. and it's just, a, in, in more and more consumers are really uh, embracing that, that, that transparency in the supply chain. So our culture is, is pretty unique. We have, I mean, we're highly productive, but laid back at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for instance, you saw the bikes in our lobby. Yeah. We have bikes available to employees. We do employee bike rides uh, a couple times a week. Um, Massage therapist is coming in on Thursday to give chair massages. Um, we have a sabbatical program, so after you're here for two years, you can take up to a month off. I mean, we have this bad vibe policy. If you if you're if you got a bad vibe for the day, <laughs> it's like you don't don't even come through the door. Yeah, bad don't vibe. Come, yeah, don't come to work. How yep. cool! You ever yep. have somebody come in with a bad vibe and be like, "Yo, man, right? <laughs> just go chill." Um, you know? Yeah, that has happened, and there have also been times where we where people don't come in. It's like I just I'm not having. You know, everybody has a bad day. Don't bring it to work with you. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> As a CEO, you know you probably earn a six-figure salary. <laughs> what what are you uh, what are you doing with all of that money? I bought a hamster. <sighs> Great investment. Do you do all the like the P and L like profit and loss sheets and all of that, and uh, take care of a lot of the accounting and payroll? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> are you at the comfort stage right now? And what's what's the next yeah. step? Yeah, we grew 54 percent last year, which for a 10-year-old company is, is pretty stellar growth. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was uncomfortable. I mean, it, it stressed our, our people out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to figure out, we actually reeled the growth in this year. We're, try, we're grow, trying to limit the growth to 30%. So it's, it's a good time to be in this business. Great problem to yeah. have. We're yeah. limiting yeah. growth, <laughs> guys, OK? Yeah. Uh, if, if somebody else out there was interested in getting into something similar, or anything yeah. for that matter, yeah. what would you say to them? Um, do it sooner than later. It's never going to get easier. Um, you, you know, if you wait for the right time, it's like waiting for the right time to have kids. Like, there's no right there's time no right just time. to do it. Um, uh, stay positive, uh, persevere, um, and, uh, and, and, and take, take, take calculated risks. Okay. Thank you so much for All talking right. to us today. Thank you. Really appreciate yeah. it. All right. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Steve and Andrea do it? Let's find out. They started with zero dollars in the bank and a credit score of around 600. In their first year of operation, it cost around $5,000 to open the original business. And although the company made around $100,000 in its first year, it operated at a loss. The word that Steve and Andrea said best describes how to make it in business is passion. Ecolips was an organic idea with raw potential. And Steve and Andrea just minded their own beeswax and didn't listen to negative lip service that would gloss over their original mission. Looks like Steve and Andrea were able to make up the recipe for their own success. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Ecolips. I had made so many mistakes, uh, you know, coming up as well as after I had money. We see that often with uh, usually athletes that are, you know, three years out of the league. Uh, I think about 65% of them are bankrupt. And financial intelligence is the fundamentals and the basics to business. And if I had uh, to, if I had a chance to really talk to myself, I would say, go to school, understand finance, understand compounding interest, understand penalties, understand everything from mezzanine financing to, to you know, how, how to put your money to work for you. So financial intelligence is by far the most important thing to understand in business. Next time on Startup, we travel to Minneapolis, Minnesota to meet with Roger, a true bicycle connoisseur and one of the owners of Alley Cats, a shop that sells, repairs and restores bicycles. Then we swing by Iowa City, Iowa to talk to Julie, a former nursing student who grew up cooking family recipes of traditional Italian food and created Zaza's, an Italian specialty market that makes fresh homemade pasta daily. All of this and more is next on Startup. Yeah, that's another option for you. Okay. See, this might be a little bit more your color. This one fits perfect. Oh, it feels good too. Like it was made for you? I feel very free. What? So I know we're on opposite sides of the fence, but why do you always gotta balk about what you do, huh?
American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Chevrolet, find new roads. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support Startup and those who dare to share their ideas with the world.